until that point, don't know if you can quite hear the music in the background. Know, it's getting the closer momentum and closer, isn't is building it? and building. Um, yeah, it's going to be set to be a historic day. Pandora Forsyth, it's been so good to have you on the program. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, stay with us here on BBC News, where along with the other BBC channels, we are coming uh, together to bring you very special coverage of the build up to the ceremony and the coronation of their majesties king charles iii and queen camilla don't go anywhere stay with us here on the bbc plenty more to come Hello and welcome to the heart of London on this momentous day, the coronation of Their Majesties King Charles III and Queen Camilla. The flags are out and for now at least so is the sun for a day of history in the making. You can expect dazzling scenes, elaborate ceremony and full throttle celebration. Stay with us and don't miss a moment as this unique day unfolds. We are very glad indeed that you've joined us to be part of the millions around the UK, the Commonwealth, the entire world set to witness this historic spectacle. King Charles III will be the 40th monarch to be crowned at Westminster Abbey, a royal tradition that records show dates back to the coronation there of William the Conqueror in 1066. And we're starting early because, frankly, there's quite a lot to fit in. Since just after sunrise this morning, thousands of members of His Majesty's armed forces have been arriving onto the platforms of Waterloo Station. In fact, the last train bringing the troops has just pulled in. They're here in all their spit and polished glory to form the largest military parade Britain will have seen in 70 years, an important part of the coronation procession. And in anticipation of what's to come, some people are up and out early to bag their spot. There they are on the processional route. Now, the great west doors of the Abbey are, we believe, opening now. Over 2,000 people are invited as guests, and some of those select few have already begun arriving. So let's join Hugh Edwards to find out more. Kirsty, yes, a very good morning. And the doors are open. The Dean of Westminster, Dr. David Hoyle, stepping out into what is still sunshine at Westminster. Let's hope it continues. And uh, today promises to be every bit as memorable uh, for the Dean and for everyone involved as the last time a coronation was held here at Westminster Abbey 70 years ago in all its majesty and all its splendor. But with one huge difference, the day's events will be seen around the world not by millions, but by billions of people. And we're all invited to witness the start of a new chapter in the story of these ancient islands, a rather modern appendage to the Abbey there today, just in case there's a spot of rain. Inside, of course, we reflect on the fact that for a thousand years, kings and queens have been crowned at Westminster. But uh, today, the people in the Abbey and all of us watching will expect a ceremony that certainly blends the ancient with the modern, because it has to reflect. The following program is available in described video. perfected every detail put in place history is about to be made here in London this is coronation day for King Charles III who after a lifetime of waiting will take the coronation oath and be officially crowned a moment like this hasn't been seen in decades 
cameras were new and hotly contested at the last coronation when Queen Elizabeth was crowned back in 1953. This time, Charles is making his own modern tweaks as he ushers this ancient symbolic ceremony and the monarchy into a new era. Welcome to London on what is set to be a truly remarkable day. You are, of course, looking at some of the pictures just outside Westminster Abbey, where in only a few hours now, King Charles's coronation will take place. Good morning to you, Canada. I'm Adrian Arsenault. Thank you for being with us bright and early, or maybe dark and early, depending on where you're watching exactly. I hope by now that you put the kettle on. We are just outside Buckingham Palace, barely a few meters from Canada Gate for those familiar with this part of London. And we're in this spot because this is where today's events will really begin. The King and Queen Consort are in the palace behind me right now. This is the first place where we will see them as they head to the coronation. So we have a couple of old friends here with us to help guide us through this day all day. Former CBC London Bureau Chief Anne McMillan, who also just co-authored a book, Kings and Queens of England, very handy that, uh, so. with your husband Peter Snow, broadcaster and, broadcaster and historian Dan Snow, who happens to be their son. That's right. <laughs> Both of you dear friends of ours, so thank you for being with us. This is such such an important day for these two people, the King and Queen Consort, but, but obviously so much more than that. It is. It's a, it's a very special day because this ceremony dates back over 1,000 years, and it's changed considerably during that period, but it never fails to dazzle. And as someone who actually remembers watching it on television in Toronto, age six, I can hardly wait to see what's going on today. Pretty special to have had a television. Well, we, we, we didn't have one. Our neighbor had one, the only person on the street who had one, because it was brand new at that time. Fantastic. So, so Dan, in terms of uh, what's been happening as we've been sitting here, for about two hours before we went on the air, people were starting to arrive uh, at the Abbey. I think we saw Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber. We saw Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson, Stephen Fry. Lots of Harry Potter alumni in there, <laughs> you know what I'm um, So lots of dignitaries, lots of celebrity famous people, entertainment faces from the UK, Joanna Lumley, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So it's a, it's a packed, it's a packed Abbey. They're not as busy as it would have been in the past. So you, you do not get in. And here at Buckingham Palace, uh, just over an hour from now, the king and the queen consort will exit the gates. They'll head down to Westminster, come back up the mall, and the day at the balcony, and we'll be here for all the action in between. All right, Anne-Marie, thanks so much. We will, of course, touch base with you throughout the morning and afternoon right here in London. The crowds have certainly assembled, and so has our CTV News team. So pour some tea, Earl Grey, Orange Pico, whatever you prefer. Get comfortable. Our live coronation coverage starts in just a few seconds. Stay with us. This is a CTV News special presentation. This day of days most memorable. I, Charles, Prince of Wales. Doesn't miss an opportunity to play Poland. Just delighted and, and happy. I pronounce the baby man and wife together. The Prince and Princess of Wales have decided to separate. So you paid to be here. <laughs> Our environment is losing its capacity to sustain us. Dear Papa was a very special person. 
Her Majesty's government's priority. Queen Elizabeth II has passed away. I cannot help but feel the weight of history which surrounds us. To proclaim His Majesty, King Charles III. God save the King. God save the King. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance and of the duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty which have now passed to me. An overcast morning here in London where history will be made and a new king will be crowned. Good morning, everyone. Hello, I'm Omar Sachdina, and welcome to CTV's special coverage of the coronation ceremony for King Charles III, a day he has known would happen since he was a very young boy, and in just a few hours' time, he will fulfill that destiny, carrying on a royal tradition hundreds of years in the making. There are crowds gathered this morning to get a glimpse of the king on what is, for them, a time of celebration marking a new era for the monarchy and the royal family. You can see thousands of them gathered there at this hour. I'm joined now by royal commentator Afia Hagen this morning outside Westminster Abbey with me. And Afia, you and I were at the palace yesterday. We were. And we caught a glimpse of King Charles. We did, And even yeah. then, there was such a sense of enthusiasm, of jubilation, of celebration, and, and people spontaneously cheering, God save the king. Yeah, I mean, we had that biblical rain in the morning, didn't they? Didn't we? But like, I'm all, like, I'm going to say all day, that didn't dampen people's spirits at all. People were still queuing up in the mall. And you know, they're glad they did because they got that impromptu walkabout from King Charles III uh, and the Prince and Princess of Wales yesterday. Got to have a chat with them. And they were very casual considering what a huge day they have ahead of them today. You know, it's a long service. It's two hours. They have the procession before they have the procession after as well and there's lots of things to do in the coronation ceremony there's different robes that have to be put on there's the anointing which is the real integral and quite touching and emotional part of the service they have a long day but they were very casual you know talking to people shaking hands uh, Kate at one point even took someone's phone and was having a conversation with their aunt in America I'm sure they thought they were being pranked um, but yeah they seemed very relaxed there was also the Commonwealth meeting yesterday. They had a reception in the evening, a busy day, considering a really busy day Well, today. they both had a very busy week, in fact. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of meetings at Buckingham Palace, a reception last night, as you just mentioned. And this, of course, is a live shot of the... We're out of time. Thanks to Dagan McDowell, Todd Pyro, Lee Zeldin, Cat Tip, our studio. And Fox News and Night is next. I'm Drake Gutho. I love you, America. Charles III is now king. Hip, hip. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance. He fulfills his destiny. He's the oldest person to become king of England. The crowning of a king is a mystical act. The last king to be coronated was George VI back in 1937. Don't make the king! Don't we have seen thousands of people line the streets. This is such an incredible moment. The scale of all this will be like nothing the world has seen. He has a lot of work to do in living up to the legacy of the Queen's 70 years reign. Everything now rests on King Charles. I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect, and love as I have throughout my life. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to London on this slightly rainy morning that is a day that King Charles has waited for for 70 years. We are about to witness the first coronation since 1953, and we are thrilled that you're up early in America 
with your coffee to join us, hopefully with your families around as well, because this is going to be a truly historic morning. And I'm thrilled to be joined by Ainsley Earhart and Piers Morgan. What a great uh, experience the three of us have had watching history over the last year. Uh, we have been to the Jubilee, 70th extraordinary celebration of Queen Elizabeth the second, and then, of course, her funeral, which came just a few months later in September. On September 8th, uh, King Charles became king after waiting for 70 years. So wonderful to be together. And uh, good morning. Good morning to you, Piers. What are well, your thoughts this morning? Do you know my thoughts are, what a privilege, isn't it? We were just saying off, off air then, to be sitting here the, in the middle of history as it unfurls. I've never had any other monarch in my life. And I'm not a spring chicken, I wish I was, but I'm not. And to have this moment of the coronation of a new monarch is spectacular. And I think particularly so following the sadness of the Queen's funeral, which was really, I think for a lot of Britons like me, quite a gut-wrenching day, actually. And to be sitting here with you guys again, you know, we had the joy of the Jubilee, that sort of forlorn feeling of the funeral, and now the cheer of the coronation. And it feels great. I feel proud to be British. There aren't many things we're best in the world at these days, but this, we do better than anybody else. Yes, and the Queen was not expected. If She lived into her 90s, and she became the Queen in her early 20s. So he has been waiting in the wings for a long time, which may be a good thing. He might have enjoyed that. Now the responsibility is on him. But I'm getting the feeling that the city is so modern now, and he really talks about modernizing the monarch. And if you talk to the younger generation here, they're really thrilled about this. And he wants to slim down the monarchy. That's been all over the press here in, in the UK because he wants to save money. He doesn't want the king's people to think he's spending tax dollars frivolously. And also, he wants his, his community, his family, to be tight. Well, the, keeping the family tight might be quite a that's challenge. That's the tricky part. Because that's obviously the, the other backstory to today is that Prince Harry arrived on a plane from California on his own, on an American Airlines commercial. flight, apparently yes. commercial. He's apparently going to fly straight back to California right after this, today. Right? Um, so only here for a few hours. I think you get a pretty icy reception in that abbey. He's being put three rows back from the main players of the royal family. You know, he won't be on the balcony. He won't be in the procession. He'll be sitting with some of the lesser members of the family. And it's a, it's a pretty clear indication of how frozen out he now is. And that is the sad family backstory to what should be this joyous moment for Charles, is that he's now pretty much estranged from one of his two sons. I just want to mention that this morning, we watched the ascension in September when Charles officially became king, which happened right upon the death of his mother. Today is really a deeply historic ritual religion Beamer gets your home cleaner This morning long live the king Reaches for his majesty the Today, King Charles III fulfills a lifelong destiny. I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect, and love as I have throughout my life. Crowned in a historic ceremony filled with ancient traditions and tributes to his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II. A sea of people lining the streets of London to witness the pomp, circumstance, and celebration. And we are here with them as the royal family ushers in a new era for the British monarchy. This is an NBC News special, The Coronation of King Charles III. Here now is Savannah Guthrie, live from Buckingham Palace. Hi, everybody, and a good early morning to all of you back in the States, and welcome to our special coverage of the coronation of King Charles III. We are live here in London. It's now just past 10 o'clock local time, and we're moments away from witnessing history together this morning. For the first time in 70 years, this country will crown a new monarch. And this morning begins with the ceremony, followed by a whole weekend of celebrations. So let's lay it out for you, what we expect to see in just about 20 minutes, the king and queen consort Camilla will leave Buckingham Palace 
in what's known as the King's Procession. They'll travel to Westminster Abbey, about a mile and a half away, the site of every coronation since the year 1066. Once crowned, the King and Queen will leave the Abbey and return to Buckingham Palace in the coronation procession. And then, of course, the iconic moment that everyone waits for, the royal family gathering together on the balcony, overlooking the crowds here at Buckingham Palace. And if the weather permits, a military flyover will take place. Tomorrow, the royal family, people across Britain, will take part in what's known as the Coronation Big Lunch. And tomorrow evening, it's a star-studded Coronation concert at Windsor Castle. American stars Lionel Richie and Katy Perry among the performers and among the attendees this morning already in Westminster Abbey. On Monday, members of the royal family will participate in various service projects in an event billed as the Big Helpout. So we've got a big few days set for us, but we're getting ahead of ourselves because the first is the coronation service itself. It is steeped in traditions that date back centuries. King Charles today will become the 40th British sovereign to be crowned inside historic Westminster Abbey. And that is where we find NBC News chief international correspondent Keir Simmons. He's live awaiting the king's arrival. We've seen a glimpse of him and, and Queen Consort Camilla as they made their way from their residence at Clarence House over to Buckingham Palace. And the attendees at the Westminster Abbey, the lucky 2,200 attendees have been filing yeah. in and already some famous faces. That's right, Savannah, Katy Perry, uh, the first lady all arriving. What a view we have, uh, right? If you were transported from midway through the last millennium, you would be familiar with what you're about to see. If people have got up to watch this morning, they are about to witness the beating heart of British history. For royal watchers, we are waiting to see, of course, the Princess and Princess of, Wa uh, Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, arrive with uh, Louis and Charlotte. Prince George, just nine years old, will be a page of honor, a huge responsibility for such a small boy. So let's just take you through what will happen. The King and Queen will travel from where you are, Savannah, at Buckingham Palace, accompanied by the Sovereign's escort in the Jubilee coach, and then inside the Abbey here, a ceremony a thousand years old. CBS News Detroit, live, streaming, and on demand. This is a CBS News special report, the coronation of King Charles III. Good morning, everybody. I'm Michelle Miller at Westminster Abbey in London. The Westminster bells are tolling, yeah. 10 a.m. here. It's much earlier back home stateside, is it not, Jeff? It is indeed, and an amazing day to be here. The rain has held off kind of, sort of, so far. I'm Jeff Glore. This centuries-old royal church behind us has been crowning monarchs since 1066. That's almost a 1,000 years. Today, Britain's new king will officially be recognized as monarch in front of about 2,000 guests. I'm Dana Jacobson outside Buckingham Palace, where King Charles and his wife Camilla, the Queen Consort, are moments away from leaving for today's ceremonies. And a huge crowd has gathered despite the rain that's sort of around, but that's okay. It could be good luck. And everybody will be there to watch it all. Most of the King's subjects and nearly all of us around the world have never seen the coronation of a British monarch. The last was Queen Elizabeth 70 years ago next month in the early black and white days of television. This ceremony will be shown live all around the globe. Well, the palace says the coronation will blend centuries of tradition and history while reflecting the monarch's role today in a much more diverse and modern England. Today's celebration will have many of the same elements Elements is Queen Elizabeth's, but also several changes to the coronation service and its style. As so many know, King Charles has waited a long time for this day and has put his imprint on the plans. The 74-year-old will be the 40th monarch to be crowned at Westminster Abbey. Today's coronation is the first to take place on a weekend since 1902. 
To help understand the significance of everything we're about to see, we have an amazing team of correspondents and consultants. We are lucky to be joined here at Westminster Abbey by CBS News Royal contributor Tina Brown and Royal expert and broadcaster Wesley Kerr. Later, King Charles's former communications director, Julian Payne, will join us after he gets to attend the coronation. Lucky him. No doubt about that. Here with me at the start of it all at Buckingham Palace is senior foreign correspondent. Month. Good morning from London. It's a historic day, one of the, that has not happened for 70 years, an event that will be celebrated in the United Kingdom and around the world filled with pomp, ceremony, and symbolism. The coronation of King Charles III and Queen Camilla and it starts right now. This is an ABC News special. Right now, the world is watching, counting down the minutes till a king is crowned. That promise of lifelong service, I renew to you all today. Following the historic reign of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, King Charles will be officially crowned with his wife Camilla by his side, a modern monarchy taking on centuries of tradition. As the Queen herself did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. Starting now, we're taking you on every royal step of the journey from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey, down this aisle, and onto the coronation altar. And that incredible moment, the crowning of a new king, with all the fanfare. A balcony wave, a spectacular bypass, all of it just moments away. We welcome you to the coronation of King Charles III and Queen Camilla. Now reporting from London, Michael Strahan. Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on this historic morning. It's an event no one under the age of 70 has ever witnessed. The coronation of a king and his queen, King Charles III and Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom. Uh, let's take a look, a live look at the iconic mile where thousands of royal well-wishers are lining up to see the new king and queen. And just moments ago, we got our first glimpse of the royal couple on their big day as they left Clarence House. Excited crowds there, a little braving the rain and the elements, and it would not be rain. Well, you're in London. You expect it. <laughs> now, Charles, he's been king since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, back in September. But this religious ceremony formalizes his place on the throne. Charles was just four years old when his mother was crowned in 1953. And now, 70 years later, the longest waiting king will be crowned alongside his wife of 18 years. There are three parts to today's event. The king's procession from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey, then the ceremony to itself, and finally, the coronation procession back to the palace. Now, within the ceremony, there are six stages. We will break each of those down for you and their significance in a few moments. But this morning, I'm in London, just outside Westminster Abbey, with an incredible team helping me track the event and break this all down. Here with me is ABC's Deborah Roberts, Victoria Murphy, contributor editor at Town & Country, and Robert Jobson, royal editor of the London Evening Standard, both of them ABC News World contributors. Thank you all for being here. We're going to have a great time yeah. Historic here in the studio. Historic moment and proud to be here to share it with you all. And our news team, they are fanned out across London. They are covering it all from Buckingham Palace to the Mall to Hyde Park to Westminster Abbey, where Charles will be crowned. We are thrilled to also have with us three people who not only know the royal family well, but they worked for their majesties in the past. Sir Peter Westmacott, excuse me, Elsa Anderson, and Christina Kiriakou. Now, we'll hear from all of them all morning long, but let's start by heading right to Buckingham Palace, where it all begins, and where my colleagues, Lara Spencer and James Longman, are standing by. Good morning, guys. Good morning to you, Michael. What a day here at Buckingham Palace. Behind us, the stands are filled. The folks that you see there are in...
God save the king!